Hey everybody, this is part three of our mid-sized one-person survival kit build-out, and it's coming up right now on Kitbashed Survival. Alright, so as I said, this is part three of a multi-part series, and if you haven't watched parts one and two yet, I would recommend watching those before you watch this part, otherwise what you're about to see might not make complete sense. Anyway, to summarize, in part one we chose the sling bag to contain our survival kit, and then in part two I added the fire, water, and shelter gear that you see here. And then I waited for your feedback, and so the first thing we'll do is discuss some of that feedback, and I'll make a couple changes based on that feedback, and then we'll get to the gear that we're going to add here in part three. So I got some feedback on the choice of the life tent tube tent, with a lot of people suggesting that I use a simple 5x7 tarp instead. That's not a bad idea, but I think for right now I'm going to stick with the tube tent, because if I'm going to use a 5x7 tarp or larger, I need to make sure that for one, it has a small footprint similar to this, and also I need to make sure it's relatively affordable because I don't want anything in this kit to be ultra expensive. I have an ultralight 5x7 tarp that I use for backpacking that has a footprint smaller than this, but it was also about 150 bucks and I don't want to spend that much on something in this kit. I want to try to keep it as affordable as possible. So if I can find a 5x7 tarp that is both small, you know, lightweight and relatively affordable, I may swap that out. I do have a couple 5x7 tarps right now, but they're all much larger than this, and I don't think that large size would fit with this build. Now, another piece of feedback I got on the tube tent was to secure it to the outside of the sling bag, thereby saving some of the interior space for additional gear. And I thought that was a great idea, so I will be taking that advice, and when we pack this kit, if I can, I'll secure this to the outside of the bag. Another piece of feedback I got in the shelter department was that some people suggested that I replace the poncho with a simple contractor bag that would be a lot more versatile. Now I didn't have any contractor bags on hand, so I ordered a box of them off of Amazon and here they are. Now in case you don't know, the difference between a contractor bag and a regular black trash bag is the thickness. So downstairs I've got some Kirkland black trash bags. Those are 1.2 mils thick, whereas these are 2 mils thick. So they're just a little more thick and heavy duty, and they're also pretty big, 55 gallons. So what I'll do is add one of the contractor bags. As I said, these are very versatile. You could use it as a poncho, you could use it as a rudimentary shelter or a ground cloth, and of course you could use it to collect water if you had to. So it's always a good thing to have a bag of some sort. And you could use a regular black trash bag if you needed to. You don't have to have a contractor bag. These are just a little more heavy duty, like I said. Now I'm gonna keep the poncho for now, but if space becomes tight when we're packing the kit, this will likely be the first thing to go. I also got some feedback on the stainless steel cup that I decided to use in part two. Now, if you recall in that video, I was deciding between the cheap stainless steel cup from Walmart and this military surplus cup that I picked up at an army surplus store. I decided to go with the stainless steel cup because the footprint is smaller, so I think it might fit easier into the sling bag. Also, they're very inexpensive and widely available. You can get them at any Walmart, and I'm sure you can get them online at tons of places. And also, for those of you who may be overseas, you can probably get something like this very easily, whereas you may not have access to a U.S. Army cup like that. But some people commented and said, well, hey, the kidney shape of the Army cup might conform to that sling bag better and it might actually work very well. So I'll tell you what we'll do. For now, I'm gonna stick with the stainless steel cup that I originally chose. But when we pack the kit, I'll try using one of these cups and if it works well, we'll go ahead and switch to it. I didn't get too much feedback on the water gear, so I think most people were okay with what I chose. I did get some feedback on the fire gear. Some people thought this was a bit of overkill. This kit is meant to supply you for one to three days at most, and my goal was to be able to build at least one fire per day. And yeah, this is probably a bit of overkill, but since fire gear doesn't really take up that much space in the kit, I decided it'd be better to overdo it rather than underdo it. I'd rather have a little too much fire gear than too little. 
Now, one piece of great feedback I got in the fire department concerned the big lighter. I got a lot of messages from people, particularly those who were not in the States, who were overseas, and they were all saying, why do you guys in the States always choose big lighters? You should be using clipper lighters. They're way better. Well, the reason we always choose big lighters is because they are everywhere here in the States and they are very cheap. But I went out and I got some clipper lighters and I agree, they are better for a survival kit because for one, they're refillable. So if you get the chance, you can refill them. And also the spark mechanism, the flint and the striker wheel can be pulled out and used independently of the lighter, which is pretty cool or you can replace it if it goes bad. So yeah, it's a much more versatile lighter than the Bic. And so I have no problem ditching the Bic and going with the Clipper. Now on the Bic, I had attached a striker surface to be used for the matches if necessary. I'm gonna do the same thing with the Clipper. So here's another adhesive striker surface. Someone asked me where I got these. I got them on Amazon and I'll just attach it to the Clipper lighter. And there we go. Now I have another striker surface here, so this is not the only striker surface, but I figured it'd be an effective use of the surface area on the lighter to put a match striker surface there as well. All right, so that's it for the feedback. I'm gonna move all this gear over to the side and then we're gonna focus on the gear for part three. And for all this fire gear, I'm going to temporarily just put it in this Ziploc bag just so it doesn't go all over the place. However, when I do the pack of the kit, I'll be putting this in different bags. In particular, I want to have the matches packed separately from the striker surfaces. And also the lighter and stuff like that. You've got to separate some of the stuff so that it doesn't accidentally ignite in the bag. But for right now, I'll just put it in here and we'll come back to that later. So going back to our 10 C's, we've already taken care of combustion cover, shelter, and a container. So today I'd like to knock out the rest of these C's in the 10 C's. So we'll start off with the cutting tool. So space permitting, I'm gonna add three cutting tools to this kit, oh yeah. A fixed blade knife, a folding pocket knife, and then a small razor knife. So this is a Dermasafe razor knife. It's very inexpensive, very small, and very lightweight and it makes for a great emergency blade. I'll probably stash this in the first aid kit or somewhere like that. Then we've got the fixed blade knife, and of course I've chosen the Mora Companion. These are excellent and very affordable. I chose the orange color because that way if it falls on the ground or something, it's easy to find. There it is. These have that great Scandi grind and they are razor sharp. Now, the only downside to the Companion in my experience is that they don't have a 90 degree spine, so you can't use them with a ferro rod or something like that. Now, there are other Mora knives that do have a 90 degree spine, but they're a little more expensive. The Companion does not. However, this Companion does have a 90 degree spine because I added one with a Dremel tool. Pretty cool. So this one will work with a ferro rod if I need it to. And then we've got the folding pocket knife, and this is the Victorinox Fieldmaster. Now the Fieldmaster is very similar to another Victorinox knife called the Explorer. The main difference is that the Explorer has a corkscrew, whereas the Fieldmaster has the Phillips head screwdriver, which I prefer for survival kits. So it's got the Phillips head screwdriver, the mysterious parcel hook, the leather punch, then you've got tweezers and a toothpick. There are two blades. You've got the large blade and then the backup blade. Then you've got the bottle opener with the large flathead screwdriver and the wire stripper and the can opener with the small flathead screwdriver. And we got a pair of scissors. I love Victorinox scissors. They are excellent. And finally, we've got a saw. And these saws are also excellent. They're great for notch work and stuff like that. So there it is, the Victorinox Fieldmaster.
So I feel like if we can fit all three of these in the kit, we'll have the cutting tool category buttoned up pretty well. Next on the list is cordage. There's a little bit of cordage with the tube tent, but I'm gonna add about 25 feet of 550 paracord and about another 25 feet of 275 cord. I chose orange for high visibility, but of course you could choose whatever color you want, green or black or what have you. All right, next on the list is candling or lighting. And so I'm gonna add a headlamp to this kit. And this is the one I've chosen. The brand is Coast. I bought this over at Lowe's and I think it cost about 25 or $30. Runs on three AAA batteries, 330 lumens, and approximately 17 hours of runtime if you're running on low. But it's got a bright, a low setting, and then red. Nothing too fancy about it, very basic, but also very affordable, so there it is. All right, then we've got cotton, and for that I've got a 22 by 22 inch bandana. And then we've got cargo tape, and so for that category, I'm gonna add some duct tape. This is one of these little pocket size packs of gray duct tape. It's got five yards by 1.88 inches or four and a half meters by 48 millimeters. You can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot and I'm sure other places as well. Next we've got compass and so I'll add one of these miniature liquid compasses. It is accurate so that should work just fine. And lastly we've got a canvas needle and for that I'm going to use a compact sewing kit. This is a gear aid compact sewing kit. It's got several needles, some safety pins, a spool of thread, and a thimble, and a couple buttons as well, so that'll do just fine. And again, that's made by Gear Aid. I think this was about $10, if I recall. All right, so here's everything we have as of the end of part three. We've got the tube tent, the contractor bag, the poncho, which may or may not stay depending on space. We've got the water gear and the stainless steel cup. We've got the emergency blanket, the sewing kit, the compass, the sling bag, of course, the duct tape, the cotton bandana. Here's our cordage. We've got a headband. Here's our fire kit. And again, this is just temporarily in this bag. Once we start packing the kit, I'll do a better job of splitting this out and organizing it. Then we've got the Victorinox Field Master, the Dermasafe Razor Knife, and finally the Mora Companion. So this takes care of the 10 C's as well as the water situation. So what I'd like to do is get your feedback on what I've got so far. And then in part four, we'll go over that feedback. I'll make any changes to the gear that I feel need to be made based on that feedback. And then we'll get into the final items of this kit, which will include food or calories. And that, by the way, includes fishing, hunting gear, stuff like that. We'll add some signaling gear, a first aid kit and some medication, and then finally some protection elements from the sun and insects and cold and dirty air and stuff like that. And if I think of anything else, we'll add it at that time as well. And hopefully by the time part five gets around, we'll be ready to start packing the kit and hopefully everything will fit inside this bag. We'll find out. Anyway, I'd like to hear your feedback on what I've got so far. That's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. This is Kitbashed Survival. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.